G'day, this is Carl Thompson from Storagecraft in New Zealand and today I'm going to be going through a quick demonstration of the August 2016 updates to the Storagecraft Cloud Services. So the Storagecraft Cloud Services is a technology built for recovery. The web-based self-service console for file and folder recovery, the ability to virtualize entire machines or your network in the cloud, We've got military grade security in the data center and we're boasting five nines of uptime, which is a tremendous effort by our cloud team. In the cloud 1.9.0 release, uh, which is August 2016, one of the big things is the virtual machine policy. This is an exclusive and patented technology to storage craft, which allows us to define a policy for the order of booting up machines in the cloud from a single button. I'm going to go into more detail on that in the next slide. One of the other cool enhancements is around the IP subnet support. We've extended the ability for the rest of the private IP arrangers in our cloud, which I'll show you in the demonstration as well. And then finally, there's some general security enhancements as well. So virtual machine policy, that's really the driver for my demonstration today. This gives each cloud customer the ability to define a virtual machine policy in the cloud. You can configure and test machine boot order, timing and dependencies and be able to press just one button to instantly launch all of your machines for a site-wide failover. So let's jump in and see what that looks like. Here I am logged into the Storagecraft MSP portal. I've selected an account here uh, called Carl Thompson and I've gone into the networking tab. So the first thing um, is around the subnet configuration enhancements I mentioned. So previously you've had the ability to define a subnet within the 192.168 range. You can now actually modify this and select any of the private IP ranges to suit your requirements. This is a great little enhancement. This was really driven by customer feedback. So hopefully this will resolve some of the requirements that some of our customers have been waiting for. The other new feature you'll note here is the virtual machine policy button. So when I click on this, it'll pop up with this sort of graphical interface and on the left hand side it's going to list each of my machines that I have available in the cloud and I can drag these, I can click on a machine and drag it into the right hand side. It's predefined the machine name there, I then can put in a password which is my Shadow Protect encrypted password I've used for the backup and then I can define a boot delay or a sleep um, time in seconds, which I'm going to leave for this server as zero. This is my primary domain controller. So this server, when I need to perform DR testing or failover, this server needs to boot up first. I then need, once that's running, all of my other servers to start up. So I'm going to go and select these other servers, and by holding down the control key, I can actually select multiple at once, and drag them across into the virtual machine policy. Again, I need to define the Shadow Protect encrypted password for each of these machines. What's really great is that once I've entered this password and saved this policy, it's not going to ask me to do this again. So this will save further time, particularly for larger environments. And for the, the sleep time for these machines, because I need the domain controller running first, I'm going to put in here a two minute um, sleep, sleep time, or, or basically it's a boot delay, right? I'm going to go in here. 120 seconds for each of them and click submit. So that's going to go ahead and add them to the policy. The next thing I need to do is basically configure these as a dependency. So these servers require DC01 to be running first. So I'm just going to drag this little arrow into DC01 from each of these machines. So what this simply means is that Exchange Server, Exchange Server 2 and my SQL Server are all dependent on DC01. So when I click on the launch VM policy button down the bottom right, it will boot DC01 first straight away, followed by a two minute delay where it will then start booting each of those other servers. Once I've defined this policy, it's good to go, but of course I could close out of it at this point in time. I, that, that will automatically save and I'm ready to go. So in the screen I can continue on configuring IPsec or OpenVPN, requesting public IP addresses, defining my private IP and DHCP reservations, and configuring my network mappings. These are all the functions that you've had the ability to do for a while now, but at any stage, when you're ready, click on the virtual machine policy button, it will load up the policy that I've pre-configured, and we just simply click on launch VM policy. And it's going to pop up 
with a final screen which asks me to confirm that I want to virtualize the latest recovery point. So for example, I could select the SQL Server and go ahead and select, you know, perhaps a previous day that I want to restore from. And this might be useful in the scenario of a crypto locker or some sort of virus where you may not want the most recent backup. And as you know, Shadow Protect has the ability to backup and immediately replicate every 15 minutes. So this might give us the ability to say, well, look, actually, I need to roll back in time. Nevertheless, uh, in this instance, I'll just utilize the most recent recovery point and click on Submit. So this is going to go ahead here and virtualize that domain controller, that DC01 server first, and after two minutes it will then go ahead and virtualize the uh, Exchange servers and my SQL server. So without clicking Abort Launch, I can close this um, dialog box up the top right here. If we go down and click on DC01, and I actually had that tab open, so I'm just going to go ahead uh, on the uh, top right here and click on Refresh. And next to that VM control button, we will see here that it is virtualizing. So this is the process that the cloud does in terms of injecting the appropriate drivers for our cloud hypervisor. That's the hardware independent restore, creating the virtual machine and virtualizing that server. So it's going to give that server two minutes um, by the time it starts. So that, that gives Windows time to boot. And um, once that domain control is then running, the following servers will then boot up after that two minute delay. So that's a really great uh, resource and I really hope people take the time to have a play with that because it's certainly helpful for testing and DR. If I take a quick look under resources, under user guides, under cloud user guide, we've got a good documentation on this process. So I'm just going to scroll down to um, StorageCraft Cloud uh, Configure Virtual Machine Policy. Here you go. Click on that and it basically takes you through that demonstration I've talked about today in terms of creating the dependencies and selecting a non-default recovery point, etc. So really great documentation to walk you through this process. It's a fantastic new update um, and you know really this exclusive technology that StorageCraft has is further helping our customers into leading edge business continuity. Again, my name is Carl Thompson from Storagecraft in New Zealand. Thanks for your time and I uh, hope you come back and watch more of our videos in the future. Cheers.